Andy A. Tischler. Today, I want to talk to you about my new book, Secrets of Owning Your Swing, The Revolutionary Power Three Golf Approach. In the book, I explain how all golf swings have 12 biomechanical features. Each of those features has three options, and only one of those options fits you. What we want to focus on today is four of the biomechanical features. These four features have to do with your arm swing. Basically, we're looking at how the wrists hinge, how the arms fold, how we develop leverage in the golf swing, and then how we deliver that leverage through the golf ball. First feature I want to talk to you about is what I call your swing path. Your, your swing path has to do with how your forearm moves in the golf swing. Your forearm can be aligned in three basic directions. The inside of the forearm can face up, it can face side on, or it can face down. The one where it faces up is what I call an under alignment. Think if you were going to pick something up, like a box from underneath the box and carry it. You would face your forearms upward. That's an under alignment. If you need to get on top of something, you put your palm down on it, you face your forearms down, and you use that alignment to get up on top of something. If you're going to pick up a box and have handles on the side, you pick them up on the side and you hold them this way, now your arms would be in a side on alignment. The thing to remember is that you're designed to work with one of those alignments in mind. For example, some golfers during the takeaway, as they initiate their swing, they're going to feel like that forearm moves into an alignment where it's facing much more up in the golf swing. Other golfers during the takeaway, the elbow goes more to the side and it faces more side on or back towards the ball line. The third option is the golfers that feel their elbow go much more back and their palm faces more down during the takeaway. Those golfers are going to be on top golfers. We also see these alignments in the delivery action. As a matter of fact, the primary uh, locations in the golf swing that I look to see if your swing path is correct for you is during takeaway and delivery. During delivery, we're also going to see those same alignments being you know, used. For example, an under golfer, as they come down, they're going to feel like that forearm is facing much more up as they move into the uh, delivery position. Okay? The side-on golfer is going to feel like the forearm is facing much more towards the target as they come into the delivery position. And the on-top golfer is going to feel like it's facing much more downward as they come into the delivery position. Now, I'm an under golfer, so both the side-on and the on-top ones are very hard for me to demonstrate. But be assured, there are a lot of side-on golfers out there, there are a lot of on-top golfers. For example, Monica Sorensen and Tiger Woods are two very good side-on golfers. If you look at Ben Hogan, Ben Hogan was actually in between side-on and on top. And you might ask, how can you be in between? The thing I want you to realize is biomechanically, when we look at the alignments, everything happens in a matter of degrees. We have golfers that are pure under golfers. We have golfers that are what I call side under golfers, and that's where Tom Watson's alignment is. We have pure side-on golfers, again, more like Monica Sorensen and Tiger Woods. We have side cover golfers, or golfers that are between side tops, the, the side alignment and the on top alignment. Those are players like Ben Hogan. Then again, we have golfers that are on top, golfers like Arnold Palmer. So we can find golfers throughout the ages that use all three of these biomechanical options, and it's just a matter of finding out which one fits you. The next feature I want to talk about is what I call your swing track. Your swing track has three options as well. There's a low track, a mid track, and a high track. How do we identify these? What's, the, what's our way of telling whether we're a low track, mid track, or high track golfer? Okay. If you look at your swing at the top of the back swing, you're going to find out your left arm is either going to be below your shoulder line at the top of the back swing, through your shoulder line at the top of the back swing, or more vertical than your shoulder line at the top of the back swing. Low track golfers are in a position where the left arm is below the shoulder line. Mid-track golfers put it through the shoulder line. High-track golfers put the left arm above the shoulder line. What determines which one of these works best for you is how your arms develop leverage. And that, to a large part, has to do with how your elbows move in relation to your torso and how your arms fold. So, for example, a low-track golfer is going to feel their arms go more, or, or elbows go more around their body before their right arm folds. And that's going to put them in a low-track position. We're also going to find that that right elbow is going to stay very low in the golf swing. At the top of the back swing, that right elbow is below their sternum. The mid-track golfers, they make their, their back swing 
The right elbow is going to go down and the left elbow comes up. It's what I call cambering. The elbows actually camber as they make their takeaway. Then as the right arm folds, that right arm folds up like it's trying to do a curl. And as that happens, it's going to put the arms right through the shoulder line at the top of the back swing. This is going to position the right elbow somewhere around sternum height to the bottom of the sternum at the top of the back swing. What does a high track golfer do? A high track golfer, as they make their takeaway and as they turn, their elbows are already lifting. So they, their elbows will be in a continual lift position as that right arm folds up to the top of the back swing. And that's going to put them in that high track line. Now why do golfers do this? You do it because it helps you create your structural leverage. One of the best ways of finding out if you're in a track that fits you is once you get to the top of the back swing, just have a friend push down on your hand position. If they can push down on your hand position and you are unable to hold it, then most likely you're not in the track that fits you. I actually do a test with a ball. So we hold a ball and we put ourselves into the golf swing and we go up to the top and I push down on that golf ball or on that ball, the exercise ball. If you're able to hold the position when you get there, then I know you're in the track that fits you. Keep in mind, for all the features and all the options I'm going to talk about, there are tests. We can test you so we can find out exactly what biomechanical feature options you run. I want to talk about is your wrist lever action. Your wrist can hinge in a vertical direction, they can hinge in a horizontal direction, or they can hinge in a diagonal direction. Once again, you're going to find out that you lever the club, you create the best structural leverage in one of these directions, either vertical, horizontal, or diagonal. Okay? Now, keep in mind again, everything happens in a matter of degrees. We may have people that seem to be right here, which seems like it's somewhere between vertical and diagonal. We may have golfers that feel like instead of being horizontal or diagonal, they're right in between horizontal and diagonal. Again, everything happens in a matter of degrees, and we can test your body to find out where the best alignment is for you. The other thing I want you to realize about your wrist lever action is it's going to have a large influence on where the club face is at the top of the back swing. So, for example, a golfer that has vertical hinge, if I create a vertical hinge, and I turn, and then I fold my arms to the top, that club face is going to be in a more vertical alignment at the top of the axle. Okay? Once again, so if I hinge my wrist vertical, I turn, I fold my arms, that's going to put that club face in a more vertical alignment at the top of the axle. Okay? We commonly call that an open position, because the club face is open to the plane. All right? So what happens when we put the club in a diagonal position? So if we get set up, I hinge my wrist diagonally, I turn and I fold, that's going to put the club face on plane at the same alignment of my left arm at the top of the axle. Once again from here, we get set up, create diagonal hinge, I turn and I fold. Again, that club face is going to be on plane as I go to the top of the axle. Okay? So what happens when we have horizontal hinge? Golfers that use horizontal hinge are going to get that club face in what's more of a squared in the arc position at the top. The club face will be facing more towards the sky. That's commonly called closed because it's closed to the plane. However, it's actually square, square to the path of the swing. So here we go. Horizontal hinge. I turn. I fold. That club face is facing more towards the sky now. So that's more in a square of the arc position. Okay. Once again from this direction. Hinge. Horizontally. I turn, I fold. Again, that club face is in more of a face in the sky, square in the arc position at the top of the back swing. So keep in mind, you can have that club face in an open position and play great golf. A lot of great players have. Johnny Miller played from that position for a long time. You can have a club face that faces more to the sky, and you can play great golf that way as well. Tiger Woods was like that when he came out on tour. You can also have a club face that's on plane and play great golf. That's traditionally what's taught today. What we want to find out is which hinge action fits you. We want you to incorporate that hinge action into your golf swing. And when you've got that hinge action down, the club face is just going to go wherever it goes. And that's okay. The reason is, is if you use the hinge action, the swing track um, option, and the swing path option to fit you, you're going to have everything loaded at the top in a way that you're structurally built to develop that leverage. All you have to do now is deliver it through the golf ball. Delivery action. And once again, there are three lever delivery actions. OK? 
Okay? The first one I want to talk about is what I call the extending delivery action. This is the traditional view of delivery. The, extended, uh, the extending delivery action was great for under golfers. So a golfer, for example, if I was waggling and pre-setting into an under position and I went to the top of the backswing, when I come down, I'm going to hold those angles until that shaft gets about parallel to the ground in the downswing. From here, I begin to extend my right arm down and through and out to my target. What we're going to find is that these golfers, because they initiate their, their delivery here, boom, their full extension is achieved somewhere about between waist high and chest high in the fall through. We're going to notice it's out of position where the shaft is about parallel to the ground. So once again, delivery for these golfers starts when the shaft is parallel to the ground in the downswing, boom, and it's completed when it's parallel to the ground in the through swing. All right? So the next uh, option we're going to look at for the lever delivery option is what I call the cornering option. The cornering option is one that works really good with side-on golfers. Side-on golfers will go to the top of the backswing. As they transition, they start down until the butt of the club is pointed at the golf ball. At that point, we're going to see that the left arm and the shaft are near 45 degree angles to the ground. From here, the golfer begins to extend the right arm down through impact, and they begin posting on their front leg at the same time. As the right arm is extending and they're starting to post, they still maintain the wrist angle on the right wrist. So I'm moving into delivery, I'm posting, I'm extending. Then, as I move through the ball, I'm going to go ahead and let that wrist unhinge to my full extension. My full extension for a corner in delivery is going to be about 45 degrees past the ball. So instead of being parallel to the ground over here, it's about 45 degrees past the ball. All right? Interestingly enough, it started at about a 45 degree over angle over here, and it's finishing at about a 45 degree angle here. So even though they're starting in different positions, they actually have basically the same duration of delivery. Okay, what's the last delivery option? This is what I call the covering delivery option. This works really good for the on-top golfers. The on-top golfer goes to the top of the backswing, and they make their transition. By the time the left arm is parallel to the ground in the downswing, they're going to start that extension of that right arm coming down. Okay? So their delivery action starts when that left arm is parallel to the ground in the downswing. They start to extend downward with the right arm. Once again, as they begin to start extend downward, the legs are posting up. We're still maintaining wrist angle on the right wrist. Once the leg hits the post, I'm going to go ahead and let the rest of that hinge angle unhinge. And you'll notice that my chest and my sternum are going to come up at this point. That makes room for the second half of the delivery action. Boom. The full extension of these golfers finishes by the time the club is two or three feet past the ball. All right? Now what you're going to find out with all these delivery actions is that there is what we call a postural release action or feature in the golf swing as well. And there are three postural release actions. Under golfers are going to use a rotate in postural release action so that matches up with their extending delivery. The side on golfer who's using a corner delivery is going to use a post up postural release action. And the on top golfer is using a covering delivery that's going to have a stand up delivery action. So you're going to find out later on when I cover those features in another video that you need to utilize those um, features to match everything up so that your swing is synchronized. All right, I hope that uh, is enough information for you right now. If you want to learn more about these features in detail and how they work in your golf swing, you can always uh, get a hold of me and you can purchase my book, Secrets of Owning Your Swing, The Revolutionary uh, Power Free Golf Approach.